It is Wednesday, my dudes! Yes! The character we're going to be talking about in this video is ML Luna. New Moon Luna. Five years. I can't believe we've reached this point in Epic 7. This has got to be the most desired Moonlight 5 star for me personally pretty much ever. It's between this and Lionheart Sarmia that we obviously got like two years ago. We're going to talk about her. Everything. Skills. Animations. Voiceover artists. Uh, how to play her. What I think she's good into. All that stuff you've come to expect in an impressions video. Let's waste no time. Animation. Send it. Not all lies are bad. Just as the truth is not always good. For the sake of peace. I'll be the villain I have to be. Time to end our twisted fate. <clears throat> oh my god, she's so cool! The S3 animation of this thing is just top notch. Like, I don't know, it's very simplistic, but... Oh, it's just chef's kiss. It's... it's... Oh man, it's just so cool to me. By the way, accompanying this character, if you guys didn't see, is Fallen Cecilia's backstory trailer leading in to New Moon Luna. Please go check it out. When Fallen Cecilia first came out, everybody was speculating when we would get to see ML Luna, considering how much hatred Fallen Cecilia describes having for that character. Again, absolutely epic trailer. They even got Cassandra Lee Morris to come back to do the voiceovers. It's only about a minute long. I'll link it down in this video's description. As you may or may not already know, Luna's role is reprised by Anna Graves in the English dub of Epic 7. She is also the voice of Kisei, as well as the three-star Yoon Ryong. Also reprising her role as Luna in the Japanese dub of Epic 7 is the wonderful Marina Inoue. You may know her as Goddess of Victory Nikkei's Helm, as well as Momo Yayorozu from My Hero Academia. But of course, the role that kind of put her on the map is Yoko Littner from Tengen Topa Guren Lagann. Moving on to New Moon Luna's stats, she is a light mage of the Libra Zodiac symbol. She stands alone as the only character in Epic 7 with this stat line. She has 1,039 attack, 613 defense, 6,034 health, 124 speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. Imprint for the team is attack percentage for the front and back lines, and the self-imprint is going to be health percentage, which is pretty good because... This Luna is actually a health scaling bruiser, as you will soon find out. The 124 base speed is the standout, but the biggest drawback here is actually not the low attack at 1039, but the 0% effectiveness, which could be an issue, as you'll soon find out when we talk about her skills. Her skill 3 is Moon's Judgment. You acquire 3 souls upon use, and it has a 4 to 7 turn cooldown, depending on Malagora. This move dispels all buffs from all enemies before sealing them and making them unbuffable for two turns. At the start of the first battle, grants skill effect nullifier once to the caster. Soul burn effect for the cost of 20 souls, this move of course ignores effect resistance. Skill effect nullifier is an effect that is currently unique to New Moon Luna. Its effect text on your screen is apparently different than what it actually does in game. Epic 7 has already clarified this on New Moon Luna's video. It reads, nullifies an effect from a skill of enemy heroes and artifacts, essentially clarifying that it only blocks the very first skill that actually makes contact with it. So for example, if your opponent has Ran and he uses his S3, Luna will still take the damage but will not get stripped or have her defense broken. Moving on to her skill 2, it is Demon Sealing Spear. Attacks the enemy by thrusting down a spear, decreasing the defense of the target for one turn, and increasing New Moon Luna's combat readiness by 50%. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. A successful attack deals additional damage to all enemies proportional to the caster's max health. And finally, we have Radiant Strike. Attacks the enemy with a spear and increases the combat radius of Luna by 15 to 20 percent depending on Malagora. Damage dealt increases proportional to Luna's max health. Okay, now that we know the kit, let's talk about New Moon Luna. How good is she? Well, at first glance, 
you're probably thinking this character is broken, right? But the more time you think about her, the more you're going to realize that she's not as broken as some of the stuff that already exists in Epic 7. For example, Moon's Judgment, which is her skill 3, it reads dumb broken. And in some aspects, it is. I personally would never design a skill like this, but we have things, again, that are more broken than it, right? This is a non-attack skill. It strips everything from your opponent's team. It seals all their characters. It stops them from any further setup with Unbuffable. But is any of that worse than just getting hit with Nicole's skill 3 into her skill 2? Yeah, you have the extra seals, but cooldown pushbacks are far more backbreaking, especially in the face of a character like Laia. Demon Sealing Spear, her skill 2, it gives incredible turn cycling as well as a lot of AoE damage. But 50% CR isn't as good as just getting an extra turn for free in your kit. And it's not like it's going to do anywhere near as much AoE damage as some of the stuff that we already have in the game. Like Euphine or Navy Captain Landy. And Radiant Strike, her skill 1, it gives her pretty good turn cycling. But you can't really take advantage of it on counter set like you can on some other characters. If you do that... You're going to hinder your ability to use her skill 3 in a timely manner, which is basically the character's entire selling point. So now you might be thinking, wait, Sue, does that mean Luna's bad? Well, no, I don't think that at all. In fact, like I said, I'm kind of astounded that they made the character the way that she is. It's certainly a decision and not one that I personally would have made. This is a character that is going to further compound some of the issues that players are having with the game, especially those of you out there who are slow. This is a really, really risky unit for them to make, in my opinion. But it's Luna, so I guess the hope is that we'll all let it slide, no matter how dumb the thing is and how many issues it causes further down the line. Tomorrow's problems for tomorrow's me, am I right? This is a privilege I think that could only come from Epic Seven's number one selling waifu. Uncontested, this character destroys nearly every single turn to and mid speed character that we commonly see. Blood Moon Haste, Dragon Bride Senya, Ambitious Tywin, Selene. All of these characters get absolutely obliterated by Luna if you are faster than them. But that's the thing, it's only if you are faster. You need Luna to be near the front of the line to take advantage of her. But if you're going to be going for speed, right? If you're going to be trying to take turn one, isn't Nikwal just a more backbreaking unit? Aren't Ran and Pera more backbreaking for your opponent's comps and possibly do more for you? And additionally, right now at high levels of play, Requiem Rowana is seeing a fair amount of usage with those same characters in aggro because of her turn one strip a buff plus cooldown pushback. Despite having a new mechanic on New Moon Luna, which is skill effect nullifier, Rowana will get through to Luna in most drafts and cripple the effectiveness of the character. Simply have Ran, Zeo, or Pera as your opener, delete the skill nullifier with those characters, then hit Luna with Rowana's S3, and then she basically becomes a non-unit. This is going to be one of the biggest hurdles to overcome, I feel like, in most competitive games with this character. As a result, immunity is an absolute must on this character. The fact that you can have immunity with skill effect nullifier gives her some protection and allow you to get off your setup. You also might need to pair her with characters on protection set that can give her a big barrier so that that way her immunity can't actually get stripped. And even then, it might still be able to get stripped. So you're probably going to need somebody with another starting buff like Navy Captain Landy's critical hit resistance to all ensure that you can get Luna's S3 off at the start uncontested. If you can pad the character out with a bunch of buffs to start and she's on the immunity set, then I think you can basically guarantee shut down your opponent's composition and just rain down lances on them and kill them with her crazy turn cycling and splash damage. And that's just for her to be used in the fast matchups. In the mid-speed or slower matchups, um, you still gotta deal with Laia. I think Luna is just a non-factor if your opponent has Laia on their team. Like, how do you actually do anything to that character? 
If you press S3, she just presses S2 and undoes it. Uh, she's tankier than you, and you just do a bunch of AoE splash damage, whereas she can just single target nuke you off the board. Yeah, so that's not really a good matchup at all. Anyways, let's talk about how I think the character should be built. Well, I already mentioned I think that immunity set's going to be a must on the character. I simply think not playing it on her opens you up to more counterplay than is necessary. Speed lets you leverage the 124 base that she has the best, so that's the set to play. And overall, it gives you the best cycling, so to me, yeah, it's just like a no-brainer speed set. Why would you not play it? As for actual stats I'd want on the character, speed, obviously, duh, effectiveness, and health. I don't think you have any business going for any other stat on this character, especially considering that the bulk of your damage is going to come from the splash on Demon Ceiling Spear and the defense break that it provides. If the scaling on that skill is insane, then maybe we can consider talking about critical hit chance or critical hit damage, but otherwise right now, no way, I don't see it. As for artifacts, Ancient Book is gonna be the no-brainer here. It's a mage with 20 souls to ignore effect resistance on the soul burn. So yeah, why would you not consider that as one of the top options? Especially, also, because if you are playing Book, then you might not even need to build effectiveness. You can just streamline your build and just go for like almost 300 speed and as tanky as you could possibly get, right? That said, I probably still would build some effectiveness because it does factor in for the defense break on the S2 and considering that's on a two turn cooldown and you're gonna be cycling with it super fast, me personally, I would want at least some to get some value on the character. If you are looking for an alternative to book because for some reason, you Let's be honest, you definitely have one. You just morally don't want to play book. You can train. I think Guide to Decision is also probably a very strong option on the character. You start with a massive barrier that scales off of her max health as opposed to attack percentage like Chatty gives. Also, you have that conditional combat readiness push, and that's going to help her mitigate her weakness to a hero like Requiem Arana. Seems like a pretty solid option. Wrapping everything up for this video. Do I think New Moon Luna is strong? absolutely she's borderline broken and i think a very solid pickup for you mid-speed players and maybe some of you slow players but i will be honest you still kind of need some amount of speed but for those of you out there who are really fast players like aggro players cleavers i kind of wonder what value she's going to bring to your account aside from her let's be honest absolutely massive badonkers here right but that said, characters like Peira, Requiem Rwana, and Nequal, uh, don't they also have equally impressive assets that also probably do more for you? So yeah, those are my thoughts on New Moon Luna. Are you guys as excited as I am about the character? Do you think I'm off base with anything I said here? Let me know all of your thoughts about her in the comment section below. The wait, the two week wait for this character is going to be like suffering, man. I had goosebumps watching her trailer. I had goosebumps making this video. I can't wait. Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. I'll catch you in the next one, everyone. Later.